Welcome to Bespoke Diaries, today's article is on, Activating Regenerative Organizational Cultures, by Giles Hutchins, founder at Leadership Immersions, United Kingdom. It's a fascinating time to be involved in transforming organizational cultures. At present Giles is fortunate to be involved in some really interesting organization transformations, ranging from purpose drive B core to large financial service providers. Every organization is a unique conglomeration of individuals, team power plays, psychological agency, value propositions, strategies and tactics, wider ecosystem relations and market forces. No two organizations are ever the same, just as no two leaders are ever the same. That is what makes leadership and organizational development coaching so rich and fascinating. And yet, there are some underlying dynamics, some core truths that underpin the diversity of every organization and team. This article explores these underlying dynamics, so that an essential simplicity amid the swirling organizational complexity of the day can be revealed. These powerful yet simple truths are what provide anchor, rope and compass through stormy seas as these. First off, what do we mean by regenerative? It's a word that has a buzz about it, perhaps even the epicenter of the new zeitgeist rising in our consciousness. And with any buzz, its portrayal can lose its essence. To be regenerative is simply to be natural. To become more whole, less fragmented, more alive, less disconnected, more in flow. Those who flow as life flows know they need no other force. Lazu. Being regenerative is a journey. It's a journey of attuning with life. It's a way of living, leading, designing and implementing products, processes, cultures and ecosystems that enhance life. All the time, through our quality of attention and intention, we can slip between being regenerative and degenerative. We can slip between flowing in harmony with life or falling out of kilter with the flow of things. Falling out of the flow of things is a natural part of our humanity as long as we catch our fall and learn to flow, by noticing and then realigning. This is the art of living wisely. Without this practice of noticing and learning to be in harmony with life our evolution is undermined. Lest we forget, it is an essential part of our human nature, to be natural, to flow with nature's rhythms. All regenerative is about is opening up to more of our human potential while being in accord with life. Much of today's managerial business logic is at odds with how life works, and so we face the difficult challenge of letting go of thought forms, mental habits, emotional baggage, internal constrictions, and ingrained assumptions that get in the way of our own regenerative potential. By comprehending the logic of life we can learn to attune with the rhythms and dynamics of the regenerative journey. One life affirming life creates the conditions conducive for life to flourish. We become life affirming when we are being natural and authentic. Two ever changing and responsive life learns, adapts and evolves through an ever changing context. In other words, life is developmental and evolutionary, ditto for our cultures, constant learning and growing through being responsible and responsive. Three relational and collaborative life consists of systems interrelating with other systems, nothing is completely isolated, everything is relating. Yes there is competition in life, yet collaboration is the overriding evolutionary dynamic, and separateness is an illusion we create in our minds, it's not how life really is. Learn to collaborate through cultivating cultures of trust and transparency not politics and power plays. Four synergistic and diverse life thrives through diversity. Tensions of different sectors crucibles for novelty and creativity to emerge. Celebrate difference and hold space for allowing creative conflict to be transmuted into generative emergence through dialogue and deep listening. Five cyclic and seasonal rhythmical life ebbs and flows through pulsations of in-breath, out-breath, day-night, waxing-waning, summer-winter, death-rebirth. Nature's rhythms invite in reflection, rest and renewal as well as creativity and productivity. Cultivate rhythms of winter-summer being doing amid daily slash weekly slash monthly business practices. Six flows of energy matter life is made up of flows of energy and matter. 
Ditto for our organizations, which are full of flows of psychological and relational energy. Let's not get overly caught up in org charts and team definitions when what really makes us come alive is free-flowing energy. Notice flow, stuckness, energy drains and catalyzers. Practice organizational acupuncture. 7 Living field or source life is permeated by immense potential energy that scientists now realize is a potent presence in everyday life. This field contains an informing consciousness. Through simple practices we aid our capacity to open to this wisdom. Remember, life is regenerative. This is about realigning back into life, and in the process we become more alive, and our organizations thrive. Transformation unfolds, it is not forced. By creating the conditions conducive for life our people and cultures flourish. Life is mind-blowing. Our rational minds might like to define it into neat and tidy biologically based facts and figures, but life defies much of what the mind's logic can grasp. For instance, a small leaf quivering the the breeze high up in the tree, has more sophisticated innovation packed into it than nanocomputing or big data. A humble blade of grass trampled underfoot is far more complex than anything we humans have ever designed, and to boot, it's organic, non-toxic, totally regenerative, beneficial to life. Our complex innovations are all too often highly toxic and exploitative of the natural and social systems we inhabit. This is what happens when we forget the underlying way of nature, we fall out of harmony with life. Technology is a powerful tool that can help humanity evolve, as long as we remember and embody the wisdom of real life. Otherwise it can be a distraction, obscuring our evolution, perhaps unintentionally catalyzing our extinction. Look deep, deep, deep into nature and you will understand everything better. Albert Einstein this hidden thread of wisdom, nature's wisdom, enables our human organizations, cultures, values, team dynamics and individual behaviors to become more whole, more real, more vital, more human, more natural. This wisdom is simple yet profound. Let's explore. There are two currents in life, and the confluence of these two currents creates the dance of life. Nothing more, nothing less. These two currents, can be called yin and ying. Here is the ancient symbol that conveys nature's wisdom, pure and simple. Neither side of these tensions is more right or more preferable than the other, and each situation invites us to bring in more of one side than the other. It's an alchemic dance, a communion of opposing tensions. The dance of life. And yet there is another secret found all around and within us if we so choose to see. Nature's wisdom shows us the way the yin-yang dance unfolds. The way of nature. From the proportions found in our feet, to the proportions found in trees, from the patterns found in flowers to the patterns found in estuaries and coastlines, from the spiraling of water in our kitchen sink to spiraling galaxies, there is a quintessential thread of timeless truth. From the feminine spawns the masculine. From the inner comes the outer. The being infuses the doing. Stillness informs movement. In order for the dance to be in harmony with nature we need be mindful of honoring the soft power of yin first and foremost. As the yin informs the yang. To live in accord with nature is to live virtuously. Seneca Countless corporations currently spend vast sums on AL staff training and development programs that attend to shaping outer activity while overlooking inner presence. Little wonder not much changes other than the outer wrapper. Well-intended programs honing value propositions, mission statements and cultural values that overlook the inner essence of the living organization and its leadership consciousness are not going to catalyze the regenerative journey. Many of these well-intentioned corporations have spent millions on purpose and culture programs with little return on investment other than jargon that people soon forget. The yin has been known as the soft and the yang known as the hard. Today we still find many leaders trying to ignore the soft stuff of essence, inner purpose and presence, while busying themselves with the hard stuff. It's this out of kilter overly yang doing disconnected, from being that is the root cause of our downstream degenerative behaviors, decisions, 
designs and cultures. What does this all mean in practice? 1. The individual leader. 2. The team and its intra and interoperable dynamics. 3. The organizational culture and structure. 1. Leadership. We have two tools to help us on the personal developmental journey, self-awareness and systemic awareness. Self-awareness, is first and foremost about us getting to know ourselves, so that we can build our trust in life. As we become more conscious of our projections, insecurities and shadows, we enrich our engagement with life, and reach beyond yesterday's bubble. Systemic awareness, is a natural capacity we all have as human beings. Systems nested within systems are the very stuff of life. Systemic awareness is our ability to sense into the network of systems within the living organization and throughout the wider stakeholder ecosystem, including our family and friends, local community, supply chain, customer network, and wider ecology of life. Regenerative Leadership Consciousness, the alchemy of self and systemic awareness, when we alchemize the dynamics of self and systemic awareness we step into regenerative leadership consciousness. Regenerative leadership consciousness invites in the yin calm inner groundedness and awareness of one's own triggers, habits and shadows combined with an intuitive sense of the interrelationality of living systems. This consciousness seeks authenticity, thinks systemically, designs for complexity, works with tensions, spawns life-affirming futures, and understands the logic of life. 2. Team Dynamics, inviting in the yin and then the yang into our team dynamics ensures we create the cultural ground for flow. Holding space for each other, enabling trust to form so people feel they can bring more of themselves into the working environment. This allows the yang creativity to flow more readily. Social technologies like theory you, feedback, deep listening, art of hosting, systemic coaching, non-violent communication methods, etc. all greatly help the yin of team dynamics. 3. Organizational culture, in regenerative leadership we spend a lot of time on living systems culture, the way to enable the organizational culture to become regenerative, through applying the regenerative leadership DNA. There is an inherent logic of life that we can learn to listen to. It is this intelligence and wisdom we now need to help our organizations thrive in the volatile times ahead. Paced on agile ways of working to a disconnected culture and time and money will be wasted. We need culture plus structure aligned, and we need the yin to infuse the yang, then we can start to attune to nature's rhythms and find the flow of the living organization while people become more human, more alive, more whole, more in harmony with life. Giles Hutchins is a pioneering practitioner and senior advisor at the forefront of the R evolution in organizational and leadership consciousness and developmental approaches that enhance personal, organizational and systemic agility and vitality. He is author and co-author of several leadership and organizational development papers, and the books. Thank you for your time don't forget to like subscribe and share. Share your thoughts in the comments below. For similar type of article please reach us at contact at thebespokediaries.com or you can visit our website www.thebespokediaries.com.